our ambassador, Leslie Jennison. Morning, Leslie. Good morning, Jane. Good morning. And we're going to be talking about lots and lots of things today, but primarily about salons returning from lockdown and that colour appointment and the plans you've got in place. And also this 10 minute colour refresh um, that we can go into. So let's talk a little bit about the current situation. I'd just like to say to everybody today isn't about all about the current situation it's about planning but it's not about PPE necessarily and those kind of things so um we're obviously all working towards a reopening date so initially how are you keeping in touch with clients because I know you work out of Billy Curry so I do. how, um, how have well, you been doing that well we first of all we've got we've got the salons sort of set up you know with the PPE I know we're not really yeah. talking about no but that's no but people are interested to know oh good oh good so what we do is we are taking every other position out. We have um, partitions going in between the backwashes. Every, everything that we can do to make the salon as safe as it can possibly be. Uh, we are, we're actually, we have a great database. So we have emails of every single one of our clients. So we are emailing our clients with a link, with okay. a, um, a little little videos of how they're going to be welcomed into their into the salon and how their journey in our salon will be so um when they come into the salon we're going to be taking temperatures we okay. will have hand sanitizers everywhere we are asking every client to come in with the face mask right okay. if they don't you know if they forget then we will provide there will be an anonymous charge yeah um billy and debbie you know them so well you know they are yeah. so on top of their game like yeah. nobody else they're just amazing so they have already um tested the best masks and the best sort of right. visors okay for, 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 for the, the team. staff yeah uh for all the team and and then the clients when they are put in their position they will have a pack in front of them that will yep. have their gown in okay. them they will have the towels in them they will have like a you know the see-through yeah. covers that go over suits yes yes like a suit cover <laughs> Suit cover, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so that they can put their coat or jacket or their bag uh, that's sealed up, that goes into the cloakroom. We okay. are not going down the route of disposable gowns. Okay. Um, Debbie, a woman after my own heart, is very, very kind of all about sustainability. Yeah, okay. Um, and so we have, we're lucky we have washing machine and tumble dryers yeah. on site. So everything then gets put back into that bag and it goes straight into washing machine at 60 degrees. Um, okay. Everybody in the salon. I mean, we have barbicides everywhere. Anyway, we always have done, yeah. Yeah, and everybody absolutely. has the barbicide certificate. Which you know, I mean, I think anyone that can read and write can get that barbicide certificate. Yes, I think really, I I would recommend anyone to have that purely because it's another way of reassuring our clients. Absolutely, that we we know everything that we we could possibly know. We've had a question already from Mike Messenger. Do you know? Will you be charging for PPE? No, in this, you won't be. Okay. Uh, we will be charging clients if they don't come in with a mask. We will be doing yeah. a charge, literally to cover the mask. The we're not going to make mask. money on okay. masks. No, absolutely. But, um, that's the only thing. And because we're not doing disposable gowns, yeah, uh, we can keep control of that. Yeah, no, I understand that. And I mean, you you are a color supremo. There's no doubt about that. You educate globally, but obviously, this has massively impacted what you do on a daily basis. So, no traveling. You're at home. Um, and you've been doing a lot of educating online. I know you and I were just talking before we went live about the change it's been for everybody having to get used to this new technology. What have you found is working best? Because you're doing a huge amount of online education, which is fantastic. Um, what What's working best for you? Oh, uh, first of all, I just want to say, I think it's so beautiful of our industry that it's, um, I mean, maybe other industries have done it, but the fact that we have this amazing sense of camaraderie and yeah. everybody's sharing their knowledge. I mean, it sends shivers up me. I just really... It's such a powerful thing that we've all become one with each other. And I think yeah. it's really made a lot of hairdressers realise that they can very easily upscale their skill set by watching, yeah. watching these lives. Um, I've really enjoyed doing them. It's been a, a new skill set for me because yeah. I have done lives before, but it's always been at uh, head office and yeah. I've always had the marketing set up the ring lights yeah. and the marketing <laughs> yeah. telling me the question big you know letter so I don't necessarily have to put my glasses on um and you know 10 minutes to go five yeah. minutes okay it's it's actually quite tricky to 
be talking to camera, to demo, to yeah. be able to recognize, because you want to recognize those people that you know follow you. Yes, of course. Be occasionally saying hello, but yeah. to answer the questions. So for me, I, I, I've loved, I've now got, this, well, you know, I'm getting better and better at it. Again, practice, practice, practice. Um, but I really enjoyed doing it. I, I don't think anything will ever take away from real no, seminars human interaction. And real, yeah. it, real interaction because, yeah. you know, it's like learning to ride a car. You know, you can't do that virtually. You need to no. be actually physically Hands on. working yeah. with hair. Yeah. And, you know, it means that you can, in front of me, you can say, right, this texture is this. How would I do it on this texture? Yeah. My country, most of my clientele are this kind of texture or this color. How do I do it? You know, how do I adjust that technique? Yeah. So um, I, I love these. And I, I think, in fact, this kind of platform, the webinar platform, yeah. I think works best. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think it has a longevity to it. But I think, and I know everybody's doing this for free at the moment, but I yeah. think that there should, once we kind of come out of this, um, I think there should be some kind of, whether it's a nominal fee, whether it's a, a fee, value. Yeah. You know, because you think, you know, these hairdressers have spent years Absolutely. honing their, their craft. and Absolutely. You know, um, so I, I, it's a kind of controversial because I know people are getting everything for free. But I, I do think people would appreciate. Yeah, um, no, I agree. Absolutely yeah. agree. And also because you're sharing your valuable insights and times. Yeah, so absolutely. You said you've got a database for clients. So you're already talking to clients about coming in and explaining the journey. Um, so what are your plans? Um, and I know you're going to demo for us, which I'm really excited about. So you obviously have been thinking about appointment times, number of customers and clients through the salon yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So talk to us about Colour 10 in regards to colour appointments and that kind of whole uh, social distancing piece. Yeah, I think, you know, as, as a stylist only, I don't think that, you know, one client in, one client out is ever going to affect you. It's kind of what you're doing anyway. But as a colourist... Yeah. I've nearly always got at least two clients in various stages of processing yeah. while I'm working on yeah, the third course. or the fourth of client. That's, yeah. That I'm not going to be able to do, um, w working the way that I have been working, because I can't use up all the space, even though we've got quite a, a big space and we've got different areas that we can use. Yeah. That's not fair on the rest of the team. So the capacity... So you could the fill the salon with all your customers <laughs> processing. I love that. <laughs> Um, so you know the capacity of the amount of clients I can physically do in one day is going to change. Yeah, so of yeah, um, it's true. We 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 are now um, we've ordered in this brand. But it's not a new it's not a new color. It's been around for over ten years. Color ten. Yeah. Now yeah. color ten is is amazing in the way that it literally processes perfectly, covers perfectly delivers perfect tone in 10 minutes right and uh, i mean i will tell I'll, I'll tell you how how that works yes what that will do is it means that 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 cuts down that processing time by a third so i so can, you can yeah. you can do more clients um yeah, of course i mean there are a, a few limitations to it in the fact that you have to be able to do a process within You've, you've got a window of uh, 10, 15 minutes max. You need okay. to get the, the color on, your application on within 15 minutes. Yeah. And you only leave it 10 minutes. But you know, this is not a product that necessarily has played an integral role at Billy Curry's because most salons in London are kind of, not necessarily destination salons, but the destination in the way that clients come in to be yeah, absolutely. hampered. And it's an experience. Harder. It's an experience. Yeah. They come for an experience. I mean, you have the occasional client that might come in on a lunch break and you've got to get in and out. Yeah. But that's not really how our right. salons work at all. So it's kind of this mindset that we, we, I feel that we should change. And I think Colour 10 will be, you know, come into its own. It'd be so integral to how each person as a business is going to be able Runs. to work and earn money, et cetera, and be able to look after all their clients. We've had a question from Zoe Millard. Will we need to skin test all clients again now? So the questions are just coming up on the left. If people see me flicking to the right with my eyes, it's because I'm looking. Um, will you need to skin test all clients now? Right. Really, really great question. Thank you, Zoe. Now, I am not suggesting that the first time our clients come back into the salon after lockdown that we're going to be doing colour temp because the, the routage or the, there's yeah. going to be too much colour to do. I'm thinking colour 10 is for application 
two, four, six every other time. Okay. So what I'm able to do is um, my client's going to sit in front of me. I'm going to do probably a variation of what I've done before, which won't need skin testing. Yeah. But I'm going to be educating every client. This is what we're going to be doing. Um, it works exactly the same way as Igora Royal or any any other permanent color that the guys are working on. Mm -hmm. um, it works in the same system, a couple of things that are different. So at that time, that's when I can explain how fabulous this product is, uh, what we can do, what we can achieve, what finishes we can get, and I do the quick skin test. So right. I doubt okay. very much I'll have any clients that I'll be doing color 10 on the first time. Yeah, it's so for the next. Ten, if I can just yeah, let, talk let to you know, so anybody, anybody that's a colorist, you know that a 3% deposit, so 6% is same level, one degree lighter, 9%, two degrees lighter, two yeah. depths lighter. This works exactly the same, exactly the same. The colors are exactly the same. Color 10 is exactly comparable to Igora Royal. So right. I don't need to teach anybody to use a different developer in any other way. Okay. The, the, the way that it works is that it has a much heavier heavier weight of pigment in each of the tubes much much more dye stuff in the tube right firstly. the second thing is in some of the colors there's a slightly higher degree of ammonia very very slightly and mm -hmm. what that does is it opens the cuticle quicker so you know if you find that a client is saying oh it smells slightly different then i would say to my client well that's just the ammonia evaporating off your hair there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. That's a normal And then the, the, it's totally yeah. normal. It's what you have in, in tints anyway. Yeah. Uh, but it's the evaporating off that some clients might smell. Um, but the main reason that this heavy pigment can get into the hair quickly is that we have this minute, like it's the smallest amino acid known to mankind that takes the, the color pigment and carries it straight inside the cortex. Okay. So that's why if you think about, you know, there's sort of 30 colors and they range from a depth three to a depth nine. Right. Now, some people might have seen on social media that there is a depth 11. That's only in, in the US and North America. Um, okay. Somebody's mentioned I mean, that I can, actually. I can, I can mention, yeah. I can talk about that later, why they have that. Um, but really, if you think about like black, we don't have a black in color 10 because- right. Black in Agora Royal or Weller or any of them, it's the tube of colour that has the highest amount of dye stuff in it. Yeah. Because it's black is black. So yeah. you, we couldn't possibly get any more dye stuff in a colour. In the tech. product. Right. So, you know, you're not going to get a black, but you've got a, a death string. So it's, it's amazing. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. Um, I mean, we get lots of questions about, are we colouring dry hair? Will we need to wash it first? I think it's fair to say that at the moment we don't have the guidelines from the government signed off so we don't know uh, will you be asking sal as clients to come with clean washed hair or what's the plan right so again we are waiting until the guidelines yeah, are, are set because you know if the guidelines change then uh, you know I, I i'm being very kind of not vague but slightly yeah, cautious about that no it's, but it's cautious yeah, cautious. yeah. yeah being cautious yeah. because Absolutely. it's really down to what the government allows us to do yeah yeah Okay. Okay. So do you want to start sharing this? Because I know um, I've had a sneak peek. Okay. So I know you've been doing some amazing work already for us in preparation <laughs> for this. So thank, thank you for you. that. Um, my pleasure. So where, where, do you, my okay. where do you want so, to start? Um, my, the only thing is my head's not going to be in camera. So just to let you know that if, if I have any tint clients at all, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a normal application, all the roots, uh -huh. and uh you know demi put a uh, demi on the mid lengths and ends like we would normally do we never do a permanent color on the roots and then take it through because obviously the ends already have the permanent color you're yeah. just refreshing with demi so um i am every other time going to be doing this technique now if i show you it's the same sectioning whether okay. it's got a side parting hold on, hold on there we go there she is. So this is for um, a client with a middle parting. Now, for me, it's the easiest way to think about doing any... Uh, right, hold on. There. That's it. There, there we go. Um, 
the easiest way to think about this is not to think, oh, a couple of inches, either, a few centimetres either side of the parting, but to think about the, uh, the kind of dynamics of a head shape. Okay. So if you're looking at a middle parting, you're going to go to the middle of the eyes, either side, round to cover the crown. If this is yep. me, it'd have to go a bit lower. I've got a very low crown. Right. And then a very small amount on the sides. We've got okay. to remember that this is a 10 minute up to 15 minute technique. Okay. Um, and also, because you're only really going to be using 10, 15 grams of colour. Okay. So, you know, it's good. It's a good all rounder. So here I'm doing exactly the same the same uh, section in, but you can see it's slightly changed because I wanted to show you if you are working, there we go. If you're working with a side parting, then obviously yeah. you're gonna have to shift that sectioning over. A side parting normally is in the corner of the eyes because yeah. that's the way that the, the face shape works. That's normally the most sort of aesthetically pleasing to have it either the corner of the eyes. Yeah. So what you do is you work to the other corner of the eye, um, and then the, the outer corner of the eye. And then okay. you're just doing the hairline, a couple of seconds right. either side of the hairline. This is exactly the same, that the hair is a little bit more sparse, so it's a bit finer, but it's actually exactly the same in width. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna get my gloves on. So. Leslie, um, we've yes. had a question from Leslie Bainham. Does it cover 100% white? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. This will give you exactly the same coverage, depending on what you use. Of course. So this will give you exactly the same coverage as Agora Royal. Right. So um, I'd like you all to imagine that this has a grey root. Yep. I'm going to use 700, so that's a, a universal depth 7. Mm -hmm. And uh, 00 just means extra naturals in uh, Schwarzkopf, so that's extra coverage. I'm also using some 71 in it. Okay. Um, and then depending on which brand you use will depend on whether you're using six or nine percent. Yeah. Now I'm going to try and talk and work it at Salon Speed <laughs> as well. So um, that's another skill set I've learned. So what I do is I work from the middle parting and that's really another way of reassuring my client that even though it's only on for 10 minutes, her parting is definitely going to be covered. Yeah. What I very rarely do would be to take this section in. I've taken this section in purely so that you could see it. But in my mind's eye, I think about the sectioning and I just go straight in with the, the middle section. And I'm looking at her in the mirror and I'm just going to the corner of the eye. So we've had Caroline Lane has asked, is, as there's a higher level of pigment, is there a higher risk of reaction? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Um, and again, that's a question that I have had quite often, not at all. If you have a client, however, who has a very sensitive scalp, uh, then I would be recommending something like TBH, you know, the one that has yeah. sort of 50% less of the PP, PPE and stuff. Yes. But really, absolutely. Okay. The effect that you're going to get scalp-wise would be the same as Agora. And we've had Lorraine Rose ask, can you use it for a full head root application? Lorraine, great question. If you have short hair, right, so that's one side done. Yeah. I should have been timing how long I'm taking. That would have been interesting. That's all right. Oh, good. Um, You're doing fine, you Leslie. <laughs> short, <laughs> if you have short hair and you yep. can get all those roots on in 15 minutes, then absolutely. Okay. However, the reason that you've got to be kind of careful on timing is that you've got to remember that if you're on for longer than 15 minutes, that pigment will drop further and further. So it, there okay. is the risk, that's the only risk is that the colors can become darker because then, you've got that heavier weight of pigment in yeah. the tuber tip. So it's Stephanie Keeling saying full roots, not full head. There's definitely no full heads. No, is that, would you agree? Right, okay. I would we, say, you know, I have a couple of clients who have like sort of long pixie cuts and I can get their roots on. Um, yeah. in 15 minutes because some of it is not actually taking sections so yes, that speeds up the yes. whole technique yeah of course um, so if you if you're very fast and you've got short hair then you can do that you definitely this is not about doing full head application uh, full length application no because uh, well unless you've got virgin hair 
if it's virgin okay. hair, then of course you could do that. Okay, so that is the top section. This is okay. how I do the sides. I pull forward, a little less color on my brush. Yeah. And then I bring it back. And can you mix it? Can you mix this product with other products, or does it? Do you use this product on its own as a color? No, you can. Um, you can absolutely. That was from Tanya. All the Brooke. colors within the portfolio you can mix together. Um, yeah. You, uh, we don't recommend anything from Royal going into color ten apart from mixed tones. Okay. So like the concentrates. Um, okay. As soon as you're adding other colors you are going to change the makeup of, of color 10 it's not going to work in 10 minutes right okay so we've interesting questions here so angela stanaway would you charge differently for this as it's not a full service and then adam withers said do you charge the same for this as it's as you would for a, a different product so for for agora royal um it's for me it's about the technique yeah so um it's about the technique. It's obviously okay. taken me 10 minutes to do this whole technique. Um, just before I come back to finish that question, I just want to show you what I'm doing now. This is a demi product. Um, this is with a 1.9 gel activator. Right. Now, let me see. I'll have to lift the hair up. Uh, and this is 7-1. Okay. And I'm just going to go over the ends because this product is something that stays on for up to 20 minutes. Okay, I'm so only there's refreshing the time. The ends. Yeah. We're refreshing the color that's kind of faded out of what sort of gold in the sunshine or, or whatever. Yeah. So this should take me like a minute to put on because it's with a gel developer. Um, it makes the whole product more slippery. Okay. Which is perfect for getting on super, super quick. Okay. So Daniel, sorry, I will come back that's... to that question. Yeah, Daniel Thomas has asked, for a root colour, should we choose a shade lighter just in case or follow the colour no. they use in a regular permanent? Brilliant, Daniel. Whatever you use, for example, if you're using um, Royal, if you're using 700 or 71, yeah. 700, use 700 okay. with um, colour 10. Use exactly the same. It's totally comparable unless you fill... You're going to, well, if you're going to take longer than 15 minutes, I wouldn't use this product. But yes. do not worry <laughs> about it going darker. I'm, I'm not, tr it's really, if you can get this product on in, within 15 minutes, that's your maximum window. Yeah. Then you have absolutely no fear of the color going darker. Okay. Um, there's a lot of love for you on here, Leslie. You can't see because you're so busy. Um, but Andrew Smith and Johan Christensen, you are the true queen oh. of colour. So there you go. There's an awful lot of lovely oh, comments coming in. You. So thank you, everybody. Um, thank do you, you. There's a Rob, um, Rob, if I pronounce this wrong, Rob, I'm sorry. Rob Forgion has asked, what is the amino acid you mentioned involved with the pigment delivery? Do we, I have to say, guys, all the technical information, the, um, the hairdresser journal team will be posting a link on our Facebook coverage of this, which will take you to all of the information on um color 10 do you know exactly which pigment it which amino acid it is leslie yeah it's um oh god glycine and arginine right the other well, two amino acids that okay. take it take okay. it down now each of the colors has a different amount of weight of pigment of course okay. depending on on the color yeah some of them have up to sort of 25 percent more more pigment right so, okay jane that's that technique that's done 10 minutes that was to the back wash under 10 minutes um, so <laughs> right let me swap that i don't want that it's going on the paint one at one moment um i'm really ruining that beautiful off. space that you have up there <laughs> <laughs> okay i guys i really wanted to show you another technique this is a comb on color this is literally, this is five minutes. Um, okay. Five minute technique. It takes probably 10 grams of color maximum. Um, sorry guys, I'm just no, it's okay. to get my next color ready. So because we legally have to wear gloves, I shall put on a clean pair of gloves. Thank so, you. So comb on color yep. is a technique, I mean, it's not just for men. I've got this great men's done by the fabulous tire for me. 
Um, yeah. For men, given those few white hairs, the white hair growing through, this yep. technique, five minutes, is a kind of blend through technique. It's, okay. it's probably one of the most popular techniques for, for men that we do. And okay. I remember learning how to do this, Jane, many, many years ago at Sassoon's. And I okay. found it probably the hardest technique to learn because okay. way more than perming or foils or anything else until I found out these kind of little niche um, hints and tips. You need to work with a comb that's quite thin. Now, hold on. Yeah, yeah, we can see that. So you can see these are the combs I would normally work with. Yeah. Fabulous for teeth, et cetera. This would be the comb that I, I would work with. It's much thinner. It's much thinner here. Yeah. Now, you also want something with the, the actual teeth are quite fine together. If you're working on very, very short hair, then you work with the finer side. Okay, okay. And when I come to through here, I will work with the slightly thicker side. Okay. The trick is to not dip, dip your uh, comb into the colour and comb on. The tip is to always... Brush a very small amount of okay. colour on. That's better, okay. isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it's great. Uh, best to uh, brush that on. Uh, no, sorry, I've done the wrong side. So. Fab. You can do this technique on anything that's kind of 10 centimetres or shorter. Okay. Come a bit closer. Adam Withers has asked, Leslie, would you use a porosity evener before? Um, I wouldn't necessarily use a porosity. It would depend on what I'm working on. Okay. No, I think, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't need to do that unless the lengths were kind of uh, over-processed or a totally different colour and I'm doing a, a sort of a light, a dark to light or a light okay. to dark. Okay, yeah. But okay. then you wouldn't be using colour 10. Okay. But great, okay. that's a great question. Steve Hogan is watching us. Lots of love oh, to you, Steve. Steve. We miss you. Oh, I miss you, Steve. <laughs> Steve is living in beautiful, sunny Spain now. Yeah, I know. Posting some really annoyingly beautiful photographs. I know, it's garden. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I know. Um, we've had a question. Somebody, Susan Wynn Stanley's asked, um, what is TBH that you mentioned? So do you oh, want to... Sorry, sorry, Doug. That, TBH is um, a portfolio of colours. And it's uh, it stands for true, beautiful, honest. Honest. Um, yeah. A beautiful line of colours. It's not. It's got a lot of the kind of what what sort of uh, stylists would consider the nasties that uh, are in hair uh, in the tints. It's got yeah. sort of fifty percent less of them. But okay. it means that you get this beautiful kind of toning. A beautiful. You allow all the sort of nuances of the. Okay. original hair to come through it's not about 100 percent coverage. coverage okay okay um and i wanted to ask you i know while you're obviously talking about the technique but a little bit about you so i was super lucky to see um a live show that you did actually for us for the opener for the british hairdressing awards last year um and it was it's the f that's the first time i've seen you work on your own on stage and it was incredible um where where do you go? I mean, the, the concept was amazing. Where where do you go to find that kind of creativity and to, to even be thinking about that kind of... Do you know, thank you so much, Jane, because honestly, I've got shivers going down me thinking about... Oh, it was incredible. Uh, ...that show. I, I um, When I was asked, I actually had an idea in my head as I was being asked because I kind of waited a long time for something like a big show. To a do platform, this yeah. Particular yeah particular kind of a um look that i wanted to go for in my head i'd always wanted for hairdressers i mean this it, this wasn't for end consumer no um i not. knew it was for hairdressers yeah and i wanted it to be really really strong and originally you know i wanted it to be all on uh halos you know beautiful like really solid little halos but i also wanted all my models to be dancers yeah um and so I had to compromise because I didn't want to use any wigs at all. Yeah. I really only wanted to use real hair. So I had to compromise because we couldn't find uh, eight models that would have halos. So yeah. I compromised and I went for, you know, little GBs and little uh, box bobs, etc. 
Mm -hmm. um, I'm so proud of that show. It's it a lot of blood, sweat and tears went into that one. I know um, that. <laughs> it, honestly, it was such a highlight. Jane, I want to say this in front of you. I, I'm really very thankful for you to ask me to do that because it was a massive highlight of my entire career because, you know, I've been coming to uh, British Edison Awards my entire career. Yeah. And, you know, you know it's globally known as being the best the best yeah, we're awards. very proud it's, of it it's well we such have great amazing, talent <laughs> uh, it was just incredible incredible um but i i'm always even though i'm not working at the moment it's actually been quite nice to have a little bit of time can you see what i'm doing yes yeah we can um i'm almost finished there oh that's good um, um i always have in fact i'll put, put this here just very quickly i always have a notebook with me yeah. Just for a second, you've got to guess that I'm still working on this. Literally, it must take five minutes. Even, even if I think of something that's not necessarily a visual, I will yep. jot things down. I mean, there's but, notes you know, everywhere. Forever. Yeah. I mean, the, the problem is my brain works off on different tangents all the time. So, you know, I'm forever doing, you know, stuff like this. Yeah. It might okay. be, it might even be just jotting down you know, numbers and depths and stuff. Okay. But I'm forever, my brain is always kind of working. And I've had time to kind of sit down with my reference books. You know, I never get a chance to do that. Which so, you wouldn't have done. I mean, how much time would you on average spend away traveling? I mean. Oh, um, the last, the last sort of five, seven years, it's been almost three weeks a month. Okay. Wow. You know, not That's necessarily in, in blocks of that, but you yeah. know, I, I, ladies and gentlemen, that is that technique. Amazing. Done. Thank so you. Um, so that technique, Leslie, Tracy Jane Thomas has said, when would you use that technique? Just on slight grey or? Oh, no, I mean, great. Was that Tracy? Yeah, uh, so Tracy, yes. Tracy, I would say that technique, I, I've kind of used the example of a man with a bit of white hair. And doing it with um, a cup yeah. of grey. Yeah. But you could use any of the colours. You could go with a, you know, like a light, you know, like a light, you know, sort of a honey blonde and go through and okay. get sort of shimmers of a sun kiss. Different colours. Color. Yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be about cup of grey at all, but it does have to be hair that is 10 centimetres or shorter, because otherwise, it, if it's after 10 centimetres, the colour sort yeah. of sits in the hair underneath and you get okay. a bit of discoloration so you'd need to go so, into kind of like a tea spoil or something Mimi was asking about TBH development time so and then Stephanie Keeling has said toning 10 to 15 minutes glossing 10 minutes retouch and then color 30 to 45 is that would you Stephanie agree you're with? on the ball thank well you well done Doug. Stephanie someone was she's paying attention when you she's were... a British shirt hairdresser she's got her own salon in Spain she's amazing okay she was um, clearly concentrating so thank you for that <laughs> I just wanted to a check, Thank check the you. advice. Um, I did also want to show everybody the neutralizing effects that you can get with uh, color 10 because this was not done on a super white uh, block. Hold okay. on, I'm going to show you. This was not done on one of these, which I think a lot of people, when I, I did this, they long to be that color again. <laughs> oh, a few more weeks. A few more weeks. Jane. I'm hanging in, hanging on in there. <laughs> I did this on a, a Universal Depth 9 Gold. So okay. I really want everybody to see. For me, this looks like it's bleach and tone. There is no yeah, bleach and tone. Okay. I mean, that's, wow. And you've got this beautiful, sort of very, very cool, beigey. This kind it looks of. looks almost iridescent. Isn't it? It's yeah. got that slight metallic feel. It has. It's this is a 15 minute technique. Wow. Um, and I think what I will do, because I know we're running out of time, but I will put together something and I will. Would you share it on your Instagram? It. That would be fun. I so will. tell everybody I what will. your Instagram is, because if you're not following this lady, you absolutely need to. Your Instagram handle? At Leslie Jennison. At Leslie Jennison. So, name. yeah, but honestly, the, your work is just stunning. If you could, that would be... Because I also know that you had some formulas that you'd written out for us that we I, could potentially share. We could potentially share on there as yes, well. Yes, I did. Do you know what? Um, in fact, Stephanie, the, 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 the family yes. that did that, she said, oh, it'd be a great idea if I wrote this you know, wrote the formula Which because you this did. is the technique I did. Yes. And I tested it out because I knew I needed to mirror yep. because whenever you do Instagram live, everything gets twisted round. 
Um, and so I tested it and I just couldn't get it. It's like, oh, it just looks like a child's writing. So I um, obviously we have an app on the phone and I just twisted the formula around. And then thank goodness I tested it with Jane just before we came on. So like, that's back to front. I'm like, you're kidding. I just did all this things right for the audience. You'd spent so, hours um, doing it as well. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. I'm so sorry so about I that. So I will post it all on my, my Instagram Brilliant. today. Okay. Paul Molnose wants to know, when are you coming back to Barcelona? Oh, Paul, do you know what? We were supposed to be launching Essential Looks in June or July. Uh, yeah. to the, the country ambassadors, you know, before it yeah, gets rolled out in September. Um, and of course, that's all cancelled. I don't know. I think we'll probably have to do a virtual launch. But, oh, Paul, I would love to come back to uh, Barcelona and go to as that. As soon as you can. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Who, who doesn't love Barcelona? So a couple does? of things I wanted to ask you just while we've got you so that people get to know a little bit more about you. And, and we are over time, so apologies. But people are saying they could watch you all day. And I agree with them. I'm fascinated. Um. What's the best bit of advice you've ever been given in your career? Um, the best bit of advice I've ever been given is to do the job in front of you to your very, very best ability. Yeah. And the other bit of advice, the best advice I'd have from Annie Humphreys, which has nothing to do with hair, was how to pack in my <laughs> fitness. Right? I, I've always you need to share that with things. me. You know, I was probably <laughs> 19 when she, uh, I did a tour of, of Spain, actually. Oh, those Weller tours that we used to do. Yeah. Um, and she she put every single piece of, of clothing in plastic, um, you know, like the dry cleaner. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I have done that ever since. Ever since I've done it. Because it, anything, whether it's creasy or whatever, nothing comes out crease. So I know it's nothing to do with hair, but that no, was it's great valuable. It's invaluable a great to me. <laughs> and what would you what would your advice be to somebody who's starting out now? Um, I would say that to to be one hundred percent passionate the whole time, and you know, even if there's something about you know, say say like it, when I learned perming, I really didn't enjoy it, yeah. and I I had to turn my mindset around and yeah. make myself think this is the best bit of my training, I love it. and and turn yeah. it around in my head. Yeah, love everything that you do. Go out and get as much education as possible. If you're going to be a colorist, learn your your hair science. If you know that, you can go anywhere and you can, you know, a new product comes out. Yes, you want to learn about the technology of it all. But if you know your hair science and how products are working on hair, it's yeah. totally invaluable. And I've just had Adam with us. And this is a really interesting question. I'm very confident with clients face to face, but strangely find it difficult sometimes to record video posts. How do you build up the confidence to do this? Because you've to aced it. Yeah, to do this kind of video. Uh, stuff I, I would say the first one that I did for my, by myself in my house yep. was for US, uh, Schwarzkopf USA. I was terrified terrified but i think i think the fact is hairdressers on the whole one they can recognize when you're when you one you know your stuff but two yes. they recognize when you're passionate and they recognize if you, if you want to be there and if you make a little mistake i mean you know, everyone makes mistakes everyone just, makes mistakes everyone makes mistakes i think you just have to own it I, you do you have to own it and also i practice and practice and practice yeah. and when when i do a little post saying right i'm going to do uh, and I post on Instagram saying, well, I'm going to be doing this, this, and this. Yeah. That you might, well, obviously you've only seen that video. I might have done that 10 times. Yeah. Before you know what you... I mean? I mean, yeah, I get that. Um, no, I do. I'm not going to post something on Instagram that isn't as perfect as I can make it. Um, and I think nerves are a good thing. I mean, I, you know, I, we were talking literally before we came on, I still get nervous. You still get nervous. Oh. And I think if you don't get nervous, then yeah. you're probably in the wrong job because it means Absolutely. you still care passionately Absolutely. about it. So, Absolutely. And I think it's yeah. trial and error, isn't it? You've just got totally. to suck it and see and try. So finally, because we're massively over, but literally, and I know everyone agrees with me, and thank you, Anna-Marie, I agree. I could talk to, talk to this lovely lady all day. What would you say to your 18-year-old self now? Uh, I would say it's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. Um, yeah. All, the, all that manic hard work I was doing, you know, and late yeah. nights and four, four model nights a week. Yeah. You know, it, and it was exhausting yep. but it all it's all worth it everything is worth it I probably would have told myself to be slightly less serious about things and maybe not take things to heart as much but I think that's more come with age I don't think that's necessarily experience 
my working yeah. life. I think that's me generally, yeah. you know. Okay. Thank you so much. So follow Leslie's Instagram and also I know the team, my team brilliantly have just posted the link to everything about what we've been talking about. So thank you. Thank you for Schwarzkopf for letting us borrow you this morning. Um it's been an absolute pleasure, Leslie. So thank I'll speak you to you so and hopefully much, hopefully see you very soon. Oh, I hope so. Jane, it's been wonderful spending this time with thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.